All right, here we go. We're going through the Bible in a year, and uh, we're going to take a big chunk this time. We're taking the whole book of Second Chronicles. So, since we're doing that, I don't think it hurts to, like, every time just go over the history of what's going on. Uh, we're going through the Bible, the first five books of the Bible, beginning with Genesis, ending with Deuteronomy, known as the Torah, the Law, the Law of Moses. And after that, you find what happens after Deuteronomy is you get into the book of Exodus. And Exodus is where the children of Israel, those that we find in Genesis, the family of Abraham and his sons, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his 12 boys, they end up in Egypt for 400 years. They're delivered by the blood of the lamb. That's where they start a whole new life. God gives them a law. And he tells them that he's going to be their king. They'll have no earthly king. God will be their king. I like that idea, you know, just having no king at all, just having God as king. So you have uh, the book of Numbers where what it tells you there is uh, they, their journey from coming out of Egypt into going to the promised land. It's the book of Joshua that he conquers the land because there's inhabitants in there and he conquers it and the 12 tribes settle in there. The book of Judges, they're trying to live with just God as their king. They have a lot of time, a lot of trouble doing that. They serve God and then they fall and then they get a deliverer and cycle after cycle. This takes 400 years. And so uh, then you get to the books of First and Second Samuel and the people ask for a king. They want an earthly king. They want to be just like everybody else and have an earthly king. Well, God tells them, you, not such a good idea. Well, they want it. So they get King Saul and turns out to be not such a good idea. So they end up getting King David in these books again, First and Second Samuel, David and his family, Solomon. And David uh, conquers and Solomon brings prosperity. So it's a um, good time, good stuff going on. But however, however, when we get uh, through there, we get to First and Second Kings. And what happens in First and Second Kings is now that Solomon is dead, there's a rebellion and there's some issues about tax and who's going to rule and there's a civil war and 10 nations go to the north they're known as Israel two nations go to the south they're known as Judah uh, the Judah kings pretty much stick to the word of God and uh, try to serve God and they do relatively well some of them do much better than others some of them do not so good at all the kings to the north really not too much good there at all and not much good happening there and it's uh, during that period that we're introduced to the prophets trying to drive them back to God. We find Elijah and Elisha and uh, relatively unsuccessful. Uh, the northern kingdom goes into exile. Now, we'll be getting to that in a little while. We'll be getting into the exile and the idea of the exile. They go into Babylon. And so First Chronicles goes all the way back to First Samuel. So we're out of chronological order when we got to Chronicles. Chronicles just means recording of the history. So now we're into 2 Chronicles, and 1 Chronicles was all about the life of David and who he was and had an awful lot about genealogies. And so now we are into 2 Chronicles, which is going to chronicle the kings of Judah, not the kings of Israel. Now it seems, gets so confusing because you think they are Israel. And, well, they are. Uh, but the northern kingdom is called Israel. The southern kingdom is called Judah. So um, Second Chronicles, Solomon, ta Solomon takes over from David, which First Chronicles, all about David and all the good stuff about David. You know, the other accounts, you know, tell some of the crazy stuff with David. But First Chronicles, mostly all the good stuff about David. So uh, whoever chronicled the Chronicles, that's who I want doing my obituary. <laughs> Just telling all the good things. So... We get here to uh, Second Chronicles, and now it's going to be about the other kings, the kings of Judah, the kings of the south. And again, it's going to be mostly about the good things that they did. And Solomon asks for wisdom. We get that in Second Chronicles. We had already seen that story where uh, at night God appears to Solomon, and he said, ask whatever you want. And he said, you've shown kindness to my father David, and um, I need to be able to govern these people. And God said, uh, to Solomon, since this was in your heart and you haven't asked for wealth or possessions or honor or the death of your enemies, and since you've not asked for long life but for wisdom, 
and knowledge to govern my people that have made you king. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given to you, and I will give you wealth, possessions, honor, such as no king who was before you ever had and no one after you. What greatest kings of all of the earth. And then it says in verse 15 of Second Chronicles chapter 1, the king, being Solomon, made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar as plentiful as sycamore trees in the foothills. So rich. Uh, David brought peace. Solomon brings prosperity. And so then you find in chapter 2 the preparations for the temple because D King David wanted to make the temple. He loved God. Uh, he, he made a lot of the preparations, a lot of the plans, laid out a lot of the things that would happen. Uh, so now Solomon is taking over those plans and he's going to build the temple in chapter 3. Chapter 4, he's going to furnish it and it tells you all the things that he furnishes it with. In chapter 6, there's an amazing uh, portion of scripture where he dedicates the temple to the Lord. He stands before the Lord, the whole assembly, and he prays this just absolutely amazing prayer. Um, and when he prays that prayer, the glory of God comes and fills the temple. And so it's dedicated in the uh, musicians come in, and Solomon says this one thing. This here is a scripture that maybe we should memorize. In Second Chronicles 7.14, in, in this temple thing, he says uh, uh, God is appearing to Solomon. And God says this to Solomon. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. So um, God being in the midst and God being in the midst of our life. And so turning to God and asking God when we get into trouble, turning, repenting, changing our ways. And chapter 8 gets more into Solomon's uh, things and what he did. And chapter 9 is the Queen of Sheba, one of the highlights of Solomon's rule and Solomon's reign. When... Um, uh, she comes and says, you know, this is amazing, you know, what, it, what it's like here. I ain't heard about this, but wow, this is just amazing. And so then Solomon dies. And we do pick up, we say that it's mostly all the positive stuff in Second Chronicles, but chapter 10 does have the rebellion of Rehoboam uh, coming against Solomon and the division of the kingdom, where Israel moves to the north, the ten kingdoms, and you have the two uh, kingdoms in the south, and the kings in the south did pretty good. And so um, what happens going forward is you get the accounts of these different kings, and you know some of them are doing good, some of them doing great, some of them really, really do good. And so you have uh, Abijah, you have Asa, Asa was, uh, Asa did a lot of reforms, you know, Asa trying to remove the high places, Asa trying to, you know, he's in 14 and 15, trying to bring the people back, uh, Jehoshaphat, he becomes the king. He's the king where he puts uh, the worshipers in front of the fighters. So if they're going out to fight, you know, let's go out with praise first. And this becomes for a lot of people, you know, well, praise, you know, praise is the way that we win our battles. Here's a song. This is how I fight my battles. I, I praise. And you get Jehoshaphat and some of these, these other kings uh, coming all in the south. And, and it tells you how they're doing and how they're not doing. And then uh, you get Joash, and, you know, he, he repairs the temple because he let it fall into disarray, and so he, he brings it back. Um, you get some really, really good kings. You get, um, you know, Uzziah and Ahaz come in there. Hezekiah, he purifies the temple again because, again, things just sort of get into disarray, and he celebrates the Passover. They had forgot about the Passover. Um, you get Sennacherib, uh, the Assyrian, coming in and threatening Jerusalem. He says, you know, we took the north and, you know, we'll take the south as well. And then you get this this kid, uh, Josiah, who's eight years old when he comes and rules. And they find the book of the law and he celebrates the Passover again and tries to bring all the people back. And, well, you know, it's not enough. It's just not enough. And, you know, you get these other kings, a couple other kings and sort of a vassal king and uh, ch chapter 36, by the time you get there, Jerusalem falls, and they go into exile as well. So the whole country fell and uh, disobeyed God, and little by little, just a downward, you know, downward spiral, downward spiral, some of these kings trying to pull it out, and nobody pulling it out completely. 
So that will bring us to the exile, which the next time we talk, we'll give an overview of what happens in the exile and how they got there. So let's move on. Love you guys.